On August 11th of 2016, before he ran for president the first time, I had the privilege of interviewing Donald Trump. I negotiated a 10-minute face-to-face interview. It happened in, I'll say, the green room down at the convention center. I was ready with my questions. I got questions from people I respect, including Mike Huckabee. And uh, Donald Trump was respectful. Uh, He gave me good answers. I've been able to get a lot of mileage out of it. And I ran it as a podcast, even though it was really for print in Charisma magazine. And then later I used it in some of my books. So I hope you enjoy my interview. A lot of the stuff he said in 2016 is just as valid today in 2024. So first question is, evangelicals and Catholics have been under attack from the Obama administration for their pro-life convictions and desire to be left alone from forced government acceptance of that which violates their biblical views on marriage. How can you reassure them that you will respect religious liberty for them? Well, I think that, you know, I even mentioned in my speech, religious liberty is is the foundation. Uh, Without religious liberty, you don't have liberty. And uh, I feel that so strong. And so many other people do, except they don't express it. And plenty of politicians do, but they don't express it. So uh, religious liberty is something that I find that I cherish, and you will never be disappointed. And when you met with evangelical leaders, um, of course, I like this for right, sure. uh, you said that you would support repealing the Johnson Amendment so churches and ministries can maintain tax exemption. That's right. Without giving them to freedom, how will you do it? Well, I'll start it very early on. I'm not actually selling it if you order another two. I started it already because I put it in the platform. You know, it's in the platform. A lot of people didn't even know what it was. And I put it in the platform. And now uh, a lot of the pastors and ministers have seen it. And they can't even believe it. Because how this happened in the first place is shocking how they were able to take it away. So it's not something that was written from the beginning. And you know, this is something that was put in by a very strong politician. That's all it is. But it makes, it silences great people. It silences people that we want to hear. Afraid to open them. They're afraid to talk about anybody. Because they could lose everything. You know, can lose everything with this. And uh, we will, I will do, if I win, one of the first things I will do is lobby very strongly to have this, Terminated. And I will tell you something, it won't be hard mm-hmm. because your lobby is so powerful. So even Democrats are going to it because this is bigger than men, bigger than women in terms of numbers of people. So I'll be able to get it done. I have absolute confidence I'll be able to get it done. And you've been lauded for the very strong bond of your adult children. Yeah. Why has it been the secret of you having such a close relationship with your children and their very obvious respect for you? Well, I worked very hard when it came to my children. And one of the things that I would tell them all the time is no drugs, very important. No cigarettes. I also tell them no cigarettes, but no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And I would say that to a point where they would go, you know, every time I did go out or see them, I'd say no drugs, no alcohol, no cigarettes. And, you know, I have friends that have very smart children, but their children are hooked on drugs or they're hooked on alcohol. And I add cigarettes because of the health thing, because it's just easier if you not smoke. I was lucky enough not to smoke. If I did smoke, I mean, I have friends that can't get off, and they're strong people. But if you've never started, it's not a problem. Same thing with drugs, same thing with alcohol. If you've never started, it's not a problem. And that's a big factor. I mean, the fact that uh, they're not hooked. And, you know, culturally, right? I mean, you never know. It's a fragile world. So who knows what happens? But I would always talk about drugs, alcohol, and to a lesser extent, see. Um, as president, who will you reach out to for spiritual counsel and why do you feel that president need God's wisdom and guidance? Well, I have many. I have so many friends, including Paula White, who's here. Uh, but I have many friends uh, within the community and some of the people who are in there today. Mm -hmm. Uh, But one of them who's been so incredible is Franklin Gray. Franklin Gray has been, I mean, he's been amazing. He's been really terrific. 
so we're close to Franklin. Uh, Pastor Jeffress has been terrific. Paul White has been incredible. Uh, so many, so many. And I will, I, I really like to stay with people that have been so loyal because they were here at the beginning where this was a very, very little tiny flame. And they were here when everyone was saying, well, you can't be actually 70 because actually the real level was 18 year rich. Off the record, if you include Gilmore, <laughs> if it's with Gilmore. But, you know, uh, how do you beat 16 seasoned politicians? Because there were 17 total. But how do you beat 16 seasoned politicians? And uh, in the case of Ben Carson, who's a terrific guy who endorsed us, Carly. Yes. But how do you beat, uh, you know, these tremendously talented people? And so they were there at the beginning. And I guess there's something nice about people that were there at the beginning. You've already said that you support Israel's claim to Jerusalem as its capital. Yes. Many evangelical Christians are very strong supporters of Israel. Yes. How will your policies toward Israel differ from your opponent? Well, for one thing, I support Israel. I don't think I think I don't think Obama supports Israel. I think he's the worst thing that's ever happened to Israel. The Iran deal is a disaster for Israel, and I'm very supportive of Israel. I have tremendous friendships in Israel. I have a son-in-law who's Jewish and married to my daughter. Uh, I have a daughter who's Jewish. So uh, I will be very strongly in favor. In the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, it says to be kind to the stranger of the land. How would that scripture guide your policy on immigration? Well, I think that's good, but we have to be careful with the same uh, we're allowing people to come into the country. We don't know anything about them. There's no paperwork. There's no documentation. You see what's going on in Germany and France and many other places where they had an open door policy, essentially. And it's going to go on here, too. I mean, we've allowed thousands and thousands of people into our country. We have no idea who they are. At the same time, we want to build safe havens. We want to build safe havens. And we're going to get the Gulf states to fund that money because it's a tremendous amount of money and this country doesn't have it. But so we want to take care of people, but we can't allow them in because we just don't know. You see what happened in San Bernardino. You see what happened in Orlando right here. You see what happened with the World Trade Center. I mean, you, you, we can look at all over to look at what's going on in France, Nice, Germany. We just can't. We have enough problems. So we can't do that. You know, you talked about uh, the rough and tumble campaign, the 17 candidates and so forth. And you have won over the evangelical vote and you've changed a lot. How has this whole process affected you spiritually? Well, I can tell you, uh, I've always been spiritual, but I really appreciate the evangelicals more because they really support it. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody supports you, you feel pretty good about it. And I'd go into a very evangelical state, and people would say, oh, gee, I won't win that state, and I'll win in, I end up winning in a landslide because I had tremendous support. You see the polls when people are leaving, they support Trump over other people that, in theory, they could have supported very easily, and they didn't. So I think uh, the fact that I had that tremendous support from the evangelicals meant a lot to me, and it will mean a lot to me in the future. You know, before you spoke, they had a speaker talking about Judeo-Christian values in the founding of the nation and so forth. In our secular society, a lot of people, you know, discount that. But, Do you believe that America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles? Yeah, I think it was. I think uh, to a large extent, when I look at football coaches uh, being fired because they held a prayer on the field, mm -hmm. like, yes, you, uh, I think it's absolutely terrible. I think it's a terrible thing. I see so many things happening that are so different from what our country used to be. So uh, now religion is a very important part of me, and it's also, I think, it's a very important part of our country. The final question, what is the most important thing in your life? Well, uh, you know, you always have to say family. It's family. It's that's a good thing from that standpoint. Uh, religion is very important, but I assume you're not talking about religion or family. But, you know, those two things are very important. 
belief is very important. Um, but you, you would always have to put family number one. And then give, give us some advice as we uh, tell your story and persuade people like, you know, like you're encouraging, the, encouraging that crowd, except instead of at church, you know, we'll be speaking to hundreds of thousands and several millions. Well, I'm going to get the job. I'm going to do a great job for religion and for the evangelicals. I'm going to do a great job. And that's why we got a standing ovation from pastors who don't give much of standing ovation because they They've heard a lot of people speak. Uh, so that was a great honor, but uh, I will do a great job. I will get the job done. And I'll get it done properly. And that will be a great thing for the evangelicals. Well, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.